Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. We are well into the new year now. Christmas far behind us. We're back here with Amy from Terra, and uh, we again want to have plant life around us. So our Christmas trees are pretty much gone at this point out of yes. our house, and uh, and our poinsettias, and all those <laughs> lovely holiday plants. And uh, now we're going to be in winter for a while. Yes. Hopefully not too long, but. It's sort of the nature of the beast here in southern Ontario. So we want to talk a little bit about incorporating plant life, but also, again, it's uh, it's quite handy to have around are herbs in our kitchen. Oh, absolutely. There's so, something that we can use, right? Sure. It's that out with the old, in with the new. Exactly. And, yeah. And succulents, of course, as well, are great to have around. Yeah, very mm -hmm. easy. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just something that we can use, something that's healthy, fresh. Yes. You know. And that's the thing. It's hard when, you know, this time of year to find something that is fresh that we right. can use, right? That's just... <laughs> right there handy for us just yeah. to snip off and, and use in our cooking. So uh, again, let's just talk about the benefits of, of herbs a little bit because, you know, obviously this time of year uh, we're, we're susceptible to colds and a lot of herbs are really great, particularly obviously oregano as everybody knows, but, right. you know, um, just having them ready to use fresh in, in salads and in soups and marinades yes. um, is, is great, again, to, you know, to have them handy with us. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we all do know is that um, the different herbs, many of them can boost your immune system in so many different ways. Sure. Um, we could talk about them until we were blue in the teeth, but mm -hmm. um, they're good. Yes. They're, they're great for you. We can use them in so many different things and yep. in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on your tastes and what you want to do with them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what's cool about it is that now you can have them in your, your kitchen and not just sitting around in a little pot like this, as, as cute as he is, but there are actually some really cool, functional, uh, very artistic pieces out there now that uh, we have new in our stores. Yeah. Instead of us having that, you know, that little garden that we have to take care of that's work, that moves mm -hmm. around and eat, you know we have some some great products that are coming in this for January this year um, this is a company called Saga Forum it's out mm -hmm. of um, Sweden mm -hmm. so um, they're taking this new approach to it um, a very gifty type mm -hmm. approach um, great packaging very easy very usable products so um, they've got something like this which is a great little one that you just you can buy your your little herbs at the store and just drop them in cute so very simple you drop them in you can change them you use up all your time, your time's not looking so fresh, mm -hmm. you can get something different, you can change it. And what's really great about these products is the watering. So uh -huh. they actually have a little hole in the front here um, and they come apart. I oh, shouldn't cool. be pulling that up like that. Right. But they, they do, they come apart. So when you mm -hmm. do water this pot from here, yes. I give it a little drink from here. If there's excess water, it drains into the bottom and I can just quickly take this to my sink and give it a little dump. Oh, that's smart. You know, versus them sitting in water. Her, it's really important herbs do not like to sit in water. So, right. So, so, so a functional product like this is fantastic. And that's what's neat. I was reading about uh, on, the, on the one box here about the, the artist. It's an actual artist that designed these. Um, you know, she's she's very, very talented and uh, went to a school of design. So about design and, and so the, the pottery behind it. So it's obviously beautiful, but again, functional very as functional, well, as you mentioned. Yeah. So it's kind of neat, uh, very typical, you know, to over in uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. particularly Sweden, to, yes. to come up with a product like this that, that's very cool looking, yeah. but obviously does it needs to do so obviously in involving an artist there is kind of a, a nice way of making these pieces look extra special yes it's important when I look at these pieces too they could be used for so many different things I could, yes. I could set two different orchids in this pot oh yeah for instance one's done with the succulents here mm -hmm. and still very functional I can drain my excess water yes out. I, I love can, this yeah so, so this is a this is a pot that has holes in the bottom yes um, and we have a few rocks at the top but uh, again you've got that little area where you can pour out the excess water right um, which is really really yeah. smart. It comes in a few different fashionable colors and things sure. like that. So to mm -hmm. suit your decor, um, yeah, like something that. great for the kitchen. I think the biggest thing that we're all looking for in our kitchens nowadays is function, is them to be very functional, very exactly. easy to use, very accessible. A product like this is great. Well, because you know there are so many things that we can buy. It's so you can just keep buying and buying all kinds of ornamental yes. things around your house. The so do you have exactly? You have both. Mm -hmm. um, something that looks good, and again, as it, uh, it's holding your herbs, or as you say, just like cute little plants, then that works out nicely. Yeah, there's one here that we've got. It's just a little tray, and the tray okay, um, pull, pulls in and out. Mm -hmm. Or come over here, buddy. All right. Yeah, so you can see this one better. It's just mm -hmm. a little decorative shelf, really, is what it is. And the, the different herbs can come in and out of it, mm -hmm. like this. And, and the tray comes in oh, and out. So you can actually, actually just there slide the tray in and out. I'll show that. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. That's great. And again, it's just a nice 
kind of a nice, bright, fresh color. Yeah, and, and it comes in a few different colors as oh, well. Does it? Okay. Yeah, and you can change it up all the time. So you can you can go from having you know your your winter herbs that we like to use, rosemary, basil, this and that, mm -hmm. to, um, to going to your fresh stuff, cilantro, chives, things like that. So as the season changes, you can change up what you're using, what you're cooking with. And right. You know, for instance, in the winter, we may use some different tea herbs, like lavender right. or... I was just uh, going to say, we do need to, to focus a little bit on that because um, there are specific herbs that, you know, as you mentioned a few there, that uh, that really are, again, just more pertinent to the winter time and, uh, yes. func and are actually, they, they seem yeah. to uh, do better. Yes. I know, for instance, myself, I cook a lot with thyme and rosemary and things like that through the winter. And as it becomes more, you know, summery mm -hmm. and... Um, summer tomatoes, basil, cilantro, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. types of things. So yeah, you will you will change your sure. change them based mm -hmm. on the season, just because of your taste, most likely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, a few little tips on uh, on trimming herbs again. So if we're dealing with some of the hardier ones, like we we're talking about uh, rosemary. So for mm -hmm. example, if you were to be picking away at uh, rosemary, you know, let's mm -hmm. take them out of here. Yeah. Um, well, how would you how would you be taking back from him to use it okay. without stripping it all? Yeah, I think a big thing is you can shape it. So we've got a piece here that's obviously bigger than the other. So We'll probably take it right down to where um, the stem meets um, the different leaves. Okay. Of course, my nails aren't strong, so I'm, I'm having a little trouble. So yeah. I may use my scissors, my herb scissors, and, yes. and give that a cut. Okay. So something like that. And then if I were to use this, I could use a whole sprig of this mm -hmm. and maybe stuff it into a chicken or mm -hmm. under the skin of a chicken. Or I may do something like this and just use my fingers and pull down and, and, and strip off. them all off. And then okay. I, I may dice them or you know, depending on what I'm using them for. Right. There's also these great little scissors that function in, in just that. They've mm -hmm. got different blades and they, um, like for instance, time, it can cut it like this. And then over your little dish, I, it'll be hard to show here, but you just cut it. So it actually gets it cut into little tiny usable pieces for you just without you having to sit there and chop, chop, chop yes. with a knife, right? Yeah, yeah it right. actually makes it really handy. A little bit easier, right? Sure. You can do your green onions like this, your chives, chives and get it so tiny, right? Chives just too. Super functional. Yeah, those are actually really cool. Um, yeah. Yes, we have those here as well. Yes. Um, so when it, I think one thing with herbs that some people forget, like you don't want to let it get down to the point where it's just a little bit left and then strip it right down to nothing, right? No, it's, not it's like any plant. You, <laughs> you don't want to use the whole plant because it actually needs the, the foliage and the leaves to continue to grow. Right. So I think I would say the rule is about a third of the plant at one time would be the most you'd ever want to use. Okay. You do need to pick herbs to keep them replenishing. So as you pick and mm -hmm. use something, it stimulates growth. So it actually sure. encourages more growth and you get more luscious There growth, you go. Right? So there is a balance there. You there just is. have to figure yeah. it out. You right? have to use them. Just don't, don't use them all at once. <laughs> just don't <laughs> use the whole plant and then you have nothing. And yes, then you have to come exactly. buy another one. <laughs> Unless so, that was your purpose when well, you went there. To <laughs> exactly. Right. Unless you were just doing something and using up an entire rosemary plant. Yeah. Um, we have tons and tons of different types of herbs, uh, lots of great ideas. And now we have beautiful ways of uh, displaying them. And mm -hmm. again, of course, they're very, very functional. So yes. in all of our stores and uh, uh, and you know our market's officially kicked off as well is. today yes. so that's kind of cool so our yes. winter market for Tara so you can check that out from uh, 10 to 3 every Saturday at our Milton store yes, so very exciting off you go now you've watched our show now you can go shopping that's it for now we'll be back actually don't watch we, you have a couple more episodes to watch and then you can go all right that's it for now we'll be back with more Tara at home when I dream I dream in color when I think of color I think of Tara Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Welcome back to Terra at Home. Today is the opening day of our Terra Winter Market at our Milton location. It runs from 10 to 3, so as soon as the show is over, get there, have fun. One of our vendors is called The Mercantile, and they are carrying Dylan's Small Batch Bitters. Yeah. So we actually decided to come right down to Dylan's mm -hmm. to experience this with Whitney, and we're going to talk a little bit about bitters. So mm -hmm. explain to me exactly what that is. So bitters really are concentrated flavoring mm -hmm. that uh, is alcohol-based. Okay. So we're using um, 
local grapes mm -hmm. uh, to ferment and make wine and then distill to make our vodka, our gin, mm -hmm. and then the bitters and as well. bitters as well. Yeah. So that's what this place is all about. Very cool bottling, cool design, kind yeah. of old school, sort of vintage, really Absolutely. a neat approach you yeah. guys have taken. It's nice yeah. to have that down in the Niagara region as yeah. well, other than wines. Absolutely. Right? And a local feel too. Yes. I mean, for the most part, we use local ingredients. Mm -hmm. So local rhubarb. Yeah. Local cherries, local pears. How cool oh. is that? That's really neat. And that, okay, so we were talking. Some people think bitters are just one kind of bitters. It was mm -hmm. just that was sort of the way it was many, the many standard. years ago, right? Yeah. But you, as you just alluded to, have <laughs> flavors, all kinds of flavors. And we if do. you're mixing that with the drink, and depending on what the base is, this can turn into something very cool. Absolutely. You can have lots of fun with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a more traditional style of bitters, which we call our DSB. Mm -hmm. So it just stands for Dylan's small batch. Okay but um, that classic sort of Angostura style mm -hmm. bitters. So that flavor that people have been used to right. for years and years. Um, but there's also 10 other flavors. Yeah, so right look at now. all these. Yeah. <laughs> it grows, and so I know that uh, we're actually gonna be making a cocktail in a bit and, uh, and I get to pick some cool flavor, but yeah. honestly, I stared at them for a while and I thought, wow, I want that one. Oh, I wanna try that one, I wanna try this one. You can mix because, the match too. And I, I guess that's what becomes yeah. fun. So I mean, we've really seen you know mixologists have such a blast over the years, mm -hmm. bringing again some drinks from the past forward again, mm -hmm. but also adding twists to it. And it's Absolutely. just it's just off the charts these days yeah. what you can do with drinks. Yeah, oh, the possibilities are, are endless mm -hmm. when you've got a collection of bitters that yes, offers such it a just nice opens range up the world. And again, I like as you say, we're using local fruit to make these. So these are. This is just very. It's very much about a local flair of something that's been around for you know. Absolutely, ever and ever time. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with them. Mm -hmm. Bartenders, mixologists love them. Sure. Even you know the home bartender or the right. home cook or baker. Exactly. There's so many other uses too. So people can come into your, your location here mm -hmm. and uh, and again you have a bar set up just as you would if you were going in for a wine tasting mm -hmm. and be Absolutely. able to experience. How different is it when you're coming in and you're trying you know rye and gins and things like that different versus trying a, a, wine. a wine? Because some people aren't used to <laughs> doing those type of tastings. Sure <laughs> it is certainly foreign to mm -hmm. a lot of people to, to sip on spirits. Yes. Neat. Uh, we of course have some mixes available for people that mm -hmm. you know just really can't just can't do it do it on its <laughs> own. Um, but it is it's nice because the the spirits and the liqueurs that we're using are all very flavorful. Mm -hmm. They taste best right. on their own. Right. Yeah. So what is what do people come here for the most? What is your sort of number one seller when it comes to say Ooh, the alcohol side of things? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I would say the unfiltered gin twenty two okay. is probably. Of our core spirits, what we're best known for. Okay. It's a very aromatic gin. Mm -hmm. We use 22 botanicals, so mm. it's a lot more floral and citrusy than what most people are used to. With so that's gin. the thing. There's just so there's so much to learn from this side of the world, right? And and again, it just mm -hmm. you can appreciate it, and you can be very um, you know just it's. it's it's an, it's an interesting side and an approach for some people, again, that may be a little bit hard uh, to take, but mm -hmm. you can actually just have a nice sipping drink and uh, without going off the charts. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> you know, yeah. Be a good yeah. Right? And the fun fruit liqueurs, yes. they're great on their own. They're not quite as strong mm -hmm. in terms of their alcohol. They're mm -hmm. a little bit sweeter. So to have a spirit that's made using local strawberries or local cherries, mm -hmm. That's why great. mix that? Oh, it's I know. Just so why good mix that? That's just good. All right, so we're going to make a cocktail first <laughs> yeah, because that, mixing. that just makes sense since we're here, right? So what are you going to make for us? So I thought uh, the cocktail that sort of best shows off the bitters themselves, mm -hmm. since we're going to incorporate those, would mm -hmm. be just a really classic gin and tonic. Okay. So I'll start. Do you want to pick? Yes. Which bitters? Do you know which one it is from the back here? I, think, I do. I, I do. I, 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 I spend enough time behind the bar. I know which ones are. I toyed between the rhubarb because I thought it was so cool, but then yes. I love pear too. So which one should I do? The pear is my ultimate yeah. okay, favorite. Let's do pear because <laughs> I, I love the I love pear in drinks. I think yeah. that's a really nice flavoring. Yeah. So I'd like to try it in this. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll okay. grab the pear. Okay. Do you want to um, maybe add some of the bitters in? Okay. Yeah. How many? So How much? I'm a little heavy-handed with my bitters. Ooh. I would say do four or five. Dashes, so a couple okay, good so shakes. One, one, two, yeah. three, four. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> and then so we've good. added an ounce and a half mm -hmm. of our unfiltered gin 22. Okay. And then we're going to use this really amazing artisan tonic syrup. So something again that's a little unique. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, a syrup that you're going to mix with soda water. Okay. So as opposed to buying a can of 
tonic water. Oh, you're going to have a really concentrated that okay. syrup that's sweetened with honey and has lemongrass in it. So it's another so all it's a natural lot more, ingredient. You're adding, again, a depth of flavor to it. Absolutely. Drink, right? Just by doing that. Yeah. So I guess you can really help people out. If this is a new world for people and they come in, you know, just give them some good ideas. Definitely. Of how you can put this together. And obviously, again, you know, at our winter market, you can pick up these bitters. Yeah. Which is so cool. Yeah. You have access to them, you know, at our, again, our Milton location. Oh, of course. Because mm -hmm. not everyone can get to the distillery. Right. So we do have great partners like the Mercantile and mm -hmm. lots of great other retailers mm -hmm. that carry them all across the country. So, okay, I'm going to try. Oh, it's going to so It smells very fresh and very light. Okay. Certainly. It's mm -hmm. the gin, it's the bitters, mm -hmm. it's that tonic. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. But the wow. fun thing with bitters is if you don't feel like you taste enough of mm -hmm. that pear, you can add a little more. Just in. put a little more and you, yeah. just, you bring your own uh, bitters in your pocket. <laughs> Give a little dash at the party. <laughs> You'll be everyone's wow. friend at a party. Absolutely. Hey, I got a little, yeah. uh, you know, you can pull, open your coat. You got them all lined up in there. there I think go. this, is, Pick your this is so cool. But again, just adding that tonic, you're getting all different layers. It feels mm -hmm. like it tastes almost herbal. It's This is mm -hmm. very, very good. Yeah. But again, yeah. have fun with it, right? Because you could experiment with so mm -hmm. many across the board. What would you say is your top seller there? You know Obviously, what? It changes again, sort standard, of seasonally but... too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the DSB is always that great have to have it on your bar kind, sure. of, yeah. kind of flavor. Um, changes, like rhubarb in the summertime, yes, we I couldn't, see people going couldn't make enough of it. Yeah. Uh, pear, cranberry, great for holidays. Mm -hmm. Orange, really versatile, so good all year round. Now we want to remind people as well that you can also make other things with bitters. You're gonna make a quick salad dressing Absolutely, course, okay. yeah. So in addition, of course, to cocktails, mm -hmm. you can use them uh, to bake with, so sure. great to use in place of vanilla, because mm -hmm. essentially it's the same thing. It's mm -hmm. just that concentrated flavor or an extract. Right. Um, but another great way to use them more savory-wise mm -hmm. is to do a vinaigrette. Okay. So we thought, oh. actually, you know what? Let's grab the DSB. Is that one there? Manager? We're gonna use that Perfect. one. Okay. Um, so this vinaigrette is so so easy. Okay. We're gonna do a um, little bit of minced lemon peel. Okay. And some celery seeds. Uh, about a teaspoon of each, and we're just going to give it a little squish mm -hmm. to release all that great flavor from the peels. Okay. And then to that, we're going to add a teaspoon of sugar, mm -hmm. three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And again, heavy handed, I like to do a lot of bitters. So that's the DSB. Okay. Um, so with that one, the base flavor for that is cherries, so right. local sour cherries, okay. uh, and then a lot of clove and cinnamon and some cardamom too. So of course you can give people ideas if they come by here and of, of course, course we encourage people to go yeah. again to our market uh, running on Saturdays all the way through into March at the uh, Terra Milton location and uh, pick up some bitters. Mm -hmm. Of Thank course. Thank you so much. And give it a little shake. Yeah, and shake it up and there's your vinaigrette. You. Thank you so much. Oh, you're Winnie. welcome. We really Thank appreciate you so much. It. And thanks to thanks. Dylan's as well. More Terra <laughs> home after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. The Hamilton Spectator, at work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And uh, we are at the Hamilton Spectator Go Cooking Kitchen today. Mm -hmm. Making, uh, we're trying to stay with the healthy trend. Last yep, week staying we with made the healthy a trend. nice cob salad. Yep. We're staying, just all vegetables today. All vegetables, we're just gonna do a quick uh, vegetable stir fry. And you know what, a lot of people shy away from doing stir fries, or if they do attempt it, they make one big mistake and that's overcooking the vegetables. 
Yes, and, and then you, you're, by the time it's served to you, it's just a wilty it's mess, and it's actually not as healthy at it's that not point. It's healthy. There's nothing okay. left. All the water is drained out of it. All the nutrients are gone out of it. So, right. I mean, what I would like you to get out of this is just kind of how to make a quick stir fry. Keep those vegetables nice and crisp, and make sure that uh, all the flavor is still retained in them. Okay, that's a good idea. And yeah. again, not having you don't have to have a heavy dressing. It doesn't have to no. be high high in sugar and high in salt. So you can you can you can achieve this without. That's right. Yep. There's a lot of different Destroying ways. It. I mean, there's a lot of different oils you can use. We're using a real simple uh, sesame seed oil. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing with sesame seed oil is you have to be careful because it has a very low smoking point. Mm -hmm. So it wants to burn, but sure it does, does give a nice smoky flavor to the dish. And it doesn't uh, take much no. with, to give it, a, give it flavor. I use it all Not the time in my stir fries because it really is just a little, little bit. It is. Yep. So what we're doing here, and this is, again, when you're doing a stir fry, the key thing is to think about what order you're going to add the ingredients and when you're going to cook them. Mm -hmm. So the carrots and the celery are going to go in first. Those are the first things because they're the thickest, they're the ones that take the longest to cook. Okay. So we're going to get them in first. So those are good tips right off the beginning. Take a look at all the vegetables take that you a look. choose because obviously there are so many people have their favorites and yes, we know carrots take a <laughs> Carrots a while. take a long time, celery mm -hmm. takes a while and the other thing is when you're doing a stir fry, it is important you do your prep ahead of time. Have everything sitting in front of yes. you. There's nothing worse than starting it and having to run to the fridge and stop. And, and you and know what, you will learn that and then you have to learn from that because I've done that in the past years ago when I first started cooking and it was, it, <laughs> yeah, that's when your stir fry becomes overcooked. Just that's that's right. like that, that Just, quickly. It's that fast mm -hmm. because stir fries are done on a higher heat. Um, you know, you don't want to do them on a low saute. You're keeping it at a higher heat. You're trying to seal everything in, mm -hmm. give it a quick fry and away okay. you go from there. All right. So I've put in carrot, celery, mm -hmm. and I put in some leek. And I'm just going to add a touch of oil to this. And this is the regular canola oil that we're using first. Mm -hmm. I don't want to add that sesame seed oil in. Like I said, because it has such a low smoking point, if I put it in now, by the time it cooks all this stuff, it'll be burnt. Ah, okay. okay. We're going to add a little bit of salt, pinch of pepper. Now, I have ginger. Mm -hmm. So we have some fresh ginger. We're just going to grate some fresh ginger. This is going to give a real nice citrusy flavor to, yes. the, to the dish. You don't need a lot of it, and you know the beauty thing about ginger is, when you're done with it, you just throw it right in the freezer, and you can do it, shave it from frozen, which is great. It lasts oh, forever for you. Good idea. So, that's a really good I mean, really a piece like that could last you an entire year. Right, because if you leave it on the counter, it starts to sprout like mine did a couple of days ago. <laughs> I didn't use it, <laughs> so. So now you have a use for now, it. <laughs> why I didn't think about putting it in the freezer? Freezers are amazing. Okay, that's good right. tip. What do you? How do you feel about uh, ginger that comes uh, minced in a jar? Uh, I kind of feel the same way about garlic minced. Yes, that would, um, no. Don't. Just buy it fresh. I mean, it's not expensive, like I said. It'll and now you can forever. put it in the freezer. So and no, now you can I'll put it in the freezer. <laughs> and it's exactly that. You're stirring it around while you're frying it. So just mm -hmm. keep moving it around, making sure that it's it's searing. But you've noticed I haven't put any liquid in there other than that little bit of oil. oil. Okay, and it's starting to fry up nicely. Okay, so you're not trying to saturate your vegetables. You're not with saturating the them. Waters or oils or anything like that. Sugar snap peas, mm -hmm. baby bok choy. Now these ones, because they're green, you gotta be careful. I put the broccoli because the broccoli was not blanched. Now if you blanch the broccoli, you'll put it in later on. Right. But because I put it in raw, I put it in near it the beginning. It needs a little bit of It needs a little time. extra time. Okay. And then I'm gonna take the stems, or the bottom half of the bok choy, and I'm gonna throw them in, because again, a little hardier, it's gonna take a little bit longer for them to cook. Oh, and so then you're gonna wait on the leaves of the bok choy. And you're gonna wait on the leaves, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> now, we have some garlic. Throw some garlic in there. Okay. And that's just simple pureed garlic. You just keep moving it around. Now, if you find that you're doing it in your house and you're finding that you're just not getting enough moisture, you didn't put enough oil or whatever, mm -hmm. you can add a little bit of water. Right. Okay, so I have a little bit here. And I know some people that, will own, that don't want to add on it oil to the stir fry, so they do they do cook it with water, with water. but again, yeah. you so you are basically steaming it, right? Yep, and most Asian restaurants do have, uh, where their stoves are, they do have a tap with water, and they just turn it on, and that's exactly that's to do that. Yep. Sear it, get it nice and hot. The only time that you would have to be careful with that is if you're adding mushrooms, because mushrooms come with a ton of water in them. Okay. Okay, right. so if you're using mushrooms, you probably wouldn't need wouldn't any need water it. at, a wa at all. all. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we have a couple things here. We still have some uh, bean sprouts to put in. I have mm -hmm. some red pepper. Um, I have some green onion that we're gonna add in. I have the rice stick, and then I have peanuts and cashews, which we're gonna finish at the mm. end. Now the rice stick, there's a couple ways of doing that. 
there's, you can boil this. Now we're gonna boil it, but when you boil it, you have to be very careful. It's literally 30 seconds in boiling water and then out straight into the pan. Ah. Or the other way, which I was taught, is you can put this in a bowl with water overnight and just saran wrap and put it in your fridge. I've heard that, yes. Yeah. And the mm -hmm. rice stick works very well like that as well. So it's so fine. It's like angel hair, basically. It is. Right? So yeah. it is going to cook quickly, and it is a nice alternative to uh, white rice or you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously. just change it up a little bit. Okay, so that's going to cook that quickly. So again, this is all about timing. <laughs> it's all about timing. Stir fries are always about timing. But this is perfect to have with a stir fry because again, that you as you know, you can get this right to the very end. Have your water boiling, throw that's it in, it. and you're good to go. So okay. now we're going to throw in the sugar snap peas, and we'll throw a whole bunch in. Now what I've done here. When I bought these, I ate one, okay? To see if the pod stringy. was stringy, exactly. So you just wanna try it beforehand. These are really, really tender. So okay. they can go in whole, you don't have to peel them, you don't have to take them out of their okay, that's pods smart. or anything. Nothing like serving someone stir fry and they're like. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing is the celery. Before I did the celery, I just took my um, peeler and mm -hmm. I peeled the back of the celery. Oh, so you're not getting again the those strings. strings. You got it. You want it to go down easily. You shouldn't be over chewing. You shouldn't That's have right. to chew past, you know, you how many not. times, 27 <laughs> times. <laughs> there you go. Now, red peppers are going in. Yep. Now, this is where you're going to get that real nice flavor. We're going to add in the sesame seed oil here. Okay. Inhale much. A little bit of that. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and finish this up and cook this quick little uh, rice pasta. We're back. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're back with Chef Mark making a vegetable stir fry, and uh, you're throwing that uh, the rice stick. Rice stick. Yep. In threw the in the rice stick. Okay. I'm gonna throw in the tops of the bok choy. Mm -hmm. so now these are all those last-minute things that just cook up really quickly, right? That's right. And sprouts. The bean sprouts. Keeping it on high. Keep flipping it around. So you don't have to have a wok to do this. No, you right? don't need a wok. No, <laughs> I mean it, we have a wok pan. I was going to say Ideally, your pan is style of uh, it. You do want it a concentrated heat at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So yep. something wide tends to create a little bit more moisture. But yes. Doing it like this, it focuses the heat on the bottom okay, and yeah, really dries true. it out quickly. That. Yep. So we're going to take the rice stick. We're saying how quickly this cooks. Only about thirty seconds, you said, really, which is nice. And now you're going to throw that in the pan mm -hmm. eventually with all the vegetables. I'm going to throw it right into the pan. Okay. Yep, we're going to give it a quick toss. We're going to mm, put it on. Nice. We're going to top it with the two kinds of nuts that I brought along. And okay. We're good to go. Just a reminder, a nice of course, fry. you can grab all these awesome recipes on our website at terragreenhouses.com. And uh, we'll let you serve this up. I love how fast it is, though. It's great. But it really is about prep ahead of time, making sure everything's ready to go so that you can just make this happen so quickly. That's it. And it's actually a really great meal to throw together after a long day at work because, yeah, sure, there might be some shopping, but other than that, you generally have most of these vegetables, uh, you know, in your fridge. Experiment, put whatever works. That's right. And I noticed you didn't put any orange juices in there, any type of, other than it was just ginger just and the ginger. some sesame. Sesame seed oil and, and ginger, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you can do all those other things, you know, mm -hmm. to add a little bit more of an Asian flavor if you wanted to. Sure. You know, add your oranges and stuff like that or mm -hmm. coconut, but... Fairly simple. And peanuts and cashews. Peanuts and cashews. Very nice. Thanks again to the Hamilton Spectator for less, letting us use their uh, Go Cooking Kitchen. And thanks to you, Mark. No problem. It's a yummy, good uh, wintry meal that gives it us lots of veggies. <laughs> there awesome. There you go. Have yourself a great weekend.